about being red side is it's much easier to get a counter pick for your mid lane. Yeah, definitely. And if it's not for your mid laner, then at least it's for your soul laner on the other side. You know, the top lane in expect right there. Yeah, and what we're expecting out of this draft phase is definitely an Ivern ban from Team WE. Uh, but I'm wondering how the shielders are going to get attacked and where those pinches are because we've seen Team WE have to play it both ways on the blue side, whether they have to pick between junglers or between shielders. And G2 is actually not even going to trade any shielders whatsoever, so that definitely changes the dynamic of the game. Definitely looking for other power picks here uh, if you're G2 Esports. It, it feels to me that Mithy is more comfortable on a melee support, and I feel like he can actually break open this matchup too. We saw yesterday... Uh, there was a plan to get bot lane ahead. We saw Trick run an experience queen, go for double camp into Scuttle, and then get a level 3 gank bot. That was ultra planned. So you can definitely tell, even if they draft weaker matchups, Trick will alleviate pressure there. And looking at this, with the Graves ban, it's no longer even a trade uh, of Graves or Lee Sin. But the thing is, Trick's Lee Sin does not demand very much respect. Exactly. This first pick is through onto Ash instead, when Lee Sin would normally have been a first pick worthy champion in other matches. But you're right, Trick, not the biggest Lee Sin player, means you can take that later on. Yeah, I would actually rather see Trick play um, Kha'Zix. More so, I would love the at least the most, but I don't think his at least has been good domestically. And then if you look at junglers that can pace just a little bit better, you know, have a little bit of a mark, even if their early game isn't great, I would personally like Kha'Zix. I don't think. G2 also doesn't feel too bad about the Ash steals. Ven can perform on other champions. Exactly. Ash has been first picked by Team WE before in one of their blue side victories earlier in the tournament. And they also have the flexibility now of getting to take the lease in. So this can potentially be a side of picks that both teams could be happy with. Yeah, and G2, they prioritized the Lee Sin over at least versus TSM, and then Svenska ran away with the game right there. So um, definitely a change up in their style, showing some adaptability. It's also something we saw in Perks. Even though he's under pressure sometimes, he's become a way more well-rounded player. You know, we were talking about earlier about how consistent he has been. That has been his pedigree during the entire season. So the game's going to see a support pickup potentially here for WB right here. I'm still on the G2 side not pleased with the bans they put through because they banned the Graves. Then they, it just feels like they got kind of pushed around in the first few picks. Yeah, this had to be Tom Kench here for... To for, for Mithy because he likes playing it. It helps shifting these lane to lane movements that help them pace in the early game. And it's just a great pick into Malzahar. Exactly. Malzahar isn't the same type of lane harass as he used to be because nope. his little minion things, what are they even called? Oidlings. Oidlings, uh, now take two hits instead of three to kill. Tom Kench has actually been an early pick support when the Karma and the Lulu have been taken off the table. So the fact that WE kind of walked into that Malzahar, I actually think does favor G2 a little bit. And now we have the solo lanes left to decide. They even get double value. Uh, Tom Kenshin itself is good against Ash already. Getting it against the Malzahar suppression, Devour is just going to be a key component here. Hopefully maybe even allowing Sven to not rush to QSS. True. And maybe eat my words and Tom Kench is the right choice after all. And G2 is the mastermind behind the ban phase two, as you kind of alluded to, somewhat baiting the Malzahar and getting the value for the Tom Kench afterwards. Bans coming through several top laners on both sides. All the mid laners left available for the most part here, unless you consider Karma and Fizz as the flexes. Yeah, I mean, one thing that I would say, Freak, uh, is both teams are playing their own game in this yeah. draft phase. Uh, you can look at this draft in a number of ways. Giving away Ash and then letting Lee Sin fall to the second rotation on blue side can be a disaster for most teams. I mean, that's why Trick has played two Lee Sin games, because it's such a high value pick. So there's a very real chance Condi takes over this game for Lee Sin, but we've got to focus on the solo now. Yeah, I think that's honestly a great point, because we've been talking from like G2's perspective, but look at what Team WE is drafting. Ash and Malzar are, are their comfort picks in that bottom lane. Condi can definitely play Lee Sin. We now get an even tank matchup with the Gragas in the top lane that I would even favor slightly towards the Gragas. So I think G2 is sacrificing maybe the perfect steals, but they're going for their own comfort. And you got to keep in mind, if Mithy's not there on the Tom Kench, someone's going to get ulted and ulted into probably dying to whatever soul has actually come out here, of course. Gragas there for the crowd control. You assume it's coming through for him in the top side. And now you probably need some kind of high damage mid laner, which LeBlanc fits the bill on. And if you're not careful, someone's getting popped on G2's side. And I'm really excited to see this LeBlanc matchup if they lock it, which they do. Give me the LeBlanc rise. has actually been the most banned champion at MSI. But in the four times it's been picked, it's lost every game. Because the teams that have been willing to give up LeBlanc have had already picked for it. Rise has won against it twice, including once for G2. So Perks is absolutely ready to play against this LeBlanc. But whenever champs banned for 14 times, it's not like these teams are just playing a fool. They definitely have some strategy and some wins behind that LeBlanc. 
Yeah, but I definitely like the reaction here. I think Perks is super happy with the way this matchup scales. Early on, it's tricky, so I think the breaking point is just these early few ganks. Can Condi do what he so often does, is just break open one of these lanes early with the Lee Sin, because otherwise, it's going to be quite tricky. Alternatively, if Shia is going to sit on this teleport versus Snare and Cocoon in the mid lane, he may just die. Yeah, that's a potentially dangerous lane, but I also see the Grog is pushing the Shen, the Ash Malzahar pushing in the Varus Tom Kench, and maybe the LeBlanc getting some shove onto the Rise. So this is close to being a disaster early game if G2 loses a little bit of pressure, because with all the pushing lanes and a strong Lee Sin jungle, that's kind of what happened to G2 the first time they played W. They got run over early and were never able to recover. I'm actually interested to see how this bot lane plays out, because if you sacrifice potions for push, you can do things like eating, avoiding and spitting it out, or, or just hard pushing with Tom Kench and using the thick skin to soak. And Varus still has some AoE potential. They may actually need to go a little bit risky there to, to prevent exactly what you're saying there, Jet, and not get triple pushed. Let's see what happens. Of course, we know that Condi has been one of the best performing junglers this tournament. Certainly has been having better games than Trick, despite both these teams being 3-3. Three and three, Condi has been a more consistent point of strength. And as you mentioned, three pushing lanes, Condi's form so far this week. This could be a complete recipe for success for that Chinese LPL team, for Team WE. And again, WE beat G2 the first time around. These are the two teams tied in second place. WE wins here, they're up to four and three. They own the head-to-head 2-0. -head and that road to the top four, that road to a high seed into the top four, means they are in a good spot for, the, for, a, for a finals berth at the very end of it all, if this train continues. WE looking to be strong here. Six games played so far at MSI for all teams. Four remaining with a likely undefeated team in the top. We're putting the barrier for making it into the next round. Five wins probably gets you there. Four wins still could. So yeah. the fact that these teams are already sitting at three means this game really gives you a lot of wiggle room in future matchups. Yeah, and in terms of the victories it gets you, top four is what you want for the seed for your region. If going further in the tournament though, then you want to be at least second or third or you meet SKT in the semifinals and it's going to be a quick trip home. <laughs> And we talked a lot about pushing lanes and champion select. I want to relay that with some stats from the tournament so far. Uh, we have a stat called forward percentage, which is the percentage of time a player is more than halfway across the map. Mystic and Ben play very forward and have been very dominant in lane. Mystic's been plus 15 CSD at 15, as well as him and Ben both having forward percentages of around 35%, which is close to the highest in the tournament. G2 has been playing back the whole time. Yep. Sven's negative three minus CSD at 15, and their forward percentages are about 15%, which is one of the lowest of all the teams. So even if they were gonna try and play aggressive, it's not been happening this tournament, and their champions don't dictate it. It's interesting. G2, as you mentioned, statistics have been the worst early game team. They've been behind more than anyone else here, and yet they are three and three. They are still second place team. They've made the comebacks happen. Now, it doesn't make you feel really confident when you're losing all your early games, but they have at least managed to withstand those early games pretty well. But they have been recently adapting. So the last time they drafted a, a lane that would get hard pushed on their turret with the Twitch, they had an early gank to relieve pressure. However, it seems as Trick starting on his right side, pathing away from this bot lane. So Mythians Ven, they will have to take the honestly tough task of farming on the turret. They have excelled at this though, um, synergy-wise. That's actually here where we see Ben start with E. The new Miles Armor may actually just max E or Q and just forgo the whole Voidling Harass pattern against this matchup. I'll have to see what he's doing here in this game. I'm definitely not up to snuff on the new Miles Hard trends. So right now, Trick doing the rap, uh, sorry, not a rap, it's a, a uh, blue wolves into red start. I lost my place briefly, and looks like a very similar sort of mirror type of pattern from Connie. They're both going to get level three on, with double buffs on the top half of the map. They and lost the right push. There. They yielded the push here, so let me see if uh, Ben and Mystic did this willingly, because they had the option to go in. Maybe they are actually scared of that exact level three early gang. That's exactly what I'm thinking, Krepo, because Mystic and Ben with those champions can easily get level two first. But if they're playing the safe game, if they think they're going to win the lane at level three or four anyway, and because Condi didn't have to make it down there for a gank, they, they're just playing the smart game right there and trying to not get pushed in. But the smart game actually concedes an advantage you didn't have to over to the opponent. Yeah, if we didn't delve even deeper, Trick started blue side, they saw a leash. It's, so, it's very punishing if an Elise goes for a single quad and clear and then goes for a gank in the same area because you can get counter jungle there. So I think this is almost too much caution from WE, but maybe there's a bigger plan in the works that uh, us mere mortal casters <laughs> do not see. Yeah, and this is a minor point. League of Legends is actually a game that's impossible to play perfectly. You can make correct decisions, yeah. but those are still based on assumptions. And the assumption for WE is that Trick would be going for an early game. He didn't, which makes it look wrong, and that's why they didn't get the push level two.
the end of the day, 200 gold does not win you or lose you a game. So the risk averse one tends to be the one that pro teams go for. And it's the one that WE chose right now. And hey, they're doing pretty well at a major international tournament. Can't hate on them too much. You saw Trick right now. He was recalling. This is very common thing for pro junglers. You'll take the five seconds to walk near the lane, then recall there. Again, you're playing percentages, you're playing the correct choice. Yeah. If there is a gank, I'm close by. If there's not a gank, I lost three seconds to be in position for a counter gank. It's probably the right choice. And so Trick making that safe assumption that if Expect gets dove or jumped on, he's around. Condi, though, has already gotten his first recall off. He's back into farming and has a lot of gold for himself. We saw another base in the mid lane. Perks picks up his tier early. Um, so G2 so far not being punished for having these losing pushing matchups, potentially. Obviously, it spikes at level 6. There were GA can uh, disappear. Also, double teleport is something we will have to track. They're going to eat Ben. This could be the kill right away. They can get this one to happen. Low HP onto him. Running away, exhaust onto Sven. Here comes Connie. Nice flash to get away from the Q. Looks like it's going to be Mithy with great health on. Wants to bait with that. Here's the flash. Gets well, the stun. It. One more hit. will do it. Connie blocks the stun. The safeguard's there. Can trick get the kill? Yes, he can. How about the trade back? No. Mithy saves his life. Beautiful execution by G2. That had to be so close because Devour is an extremely long cooldown early on and he used it offensively at the start of trade. Now Perks has to leave the lane kingdom because he got poked out. Yeah, so a loss in the mid lane, but a win down bottom there for G2. They were winning that 2v2 straight up. That's a lot of the reason why people like Tom Kent, even into range matchups, because his all-in potential is so high. You ran that Q and Ben is close because he was trying to harass Ben. You're too far up in the lane, man. Ben then has to blow his exhaust every summer gets burned. And because Kondi was there before Trick, that's what nearly turns it around. But this is how big the G2 advantage was earlier. Trick can arrive five seconds later, and G2 can still come out on top of the fight. And it also shows you why in a lot of laning phases, look at this Ah, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. How, if you want to beat a Tom Kench lane, you got to go through him first. Because if you ignore him in the trade, his traits from proximity are so strong. So generally, you want to poke him out into the zero pots. He steps back, and then you go to the AD carry. But Ben skips this crucial step here and gets completely outtraded. Hey, what's funny to me is it reminds me of when WE lost to Gigabyte Marines yesterday, and when I cast them, it was Ben walking up when he shouldn't have in, in the Marines game. It was him walking up and exhausting his Zyra when they were trying to go for someone else. Here, he's walking past the Tom Kench to get comboed on, and lo and behold, lose the bot lane matchup as a result. Yeah, and that's the crazy thing, right, for WE, because Mystic has the best CS differential stats in the bottom lane, and they're often pushed up, so they're playing very aggressive. But that 10 or 15 CS actually isn't going to matter if you're giving up kills in lane, because the 15 CS isn't going to equal the first blood gold that's about 600 going over to the other team. So definitely now what's becoming a trend for WE. Yeah, shifting to the other side of the map here, Perks, he still maintained his flash. More importantly, he can now play aggressive because he has backup from Expect. Expect hit level six. He's currently in an empty lane. That's why Perks is going this aggro. Now, of course, 957 is there to potentially cancel out, but his teleport is down. TP down means it's harder to roam around, of course. Expect in 957 still in a trading pattern, but Trick coming in to turn the gank around. There's a nice cocoon, a lot of stuns there. No more CC to land, actually Duke's back against the explosive cast. Hey, some damage. Yeah, both top laners are actually trading. Body Slam from Gragas and Taunt from Expect. So the gank from Trip there was pretty low risk, and 957 was very safe with the way he tried to get away, flashing and ulting. That leaves him a little bit vulnerable for later, if Perks can ever find a window in mid lane to come die. Let's see what comes in next. 600 gold difference right now. G2 basically up the value of that first blood plus assist. One of the major benefits of having Ash on the team. Hawkshot knows that Raptors are down, Redbow spawning soon, and that Trick is exactly topside by the Krugs. Might have gone by the blue buff and seen that was up as well. Yeah, but Trick on low HP and low resources means he has to base and then go for his clear. His bed buffs up, so the bot lane can actually expect Trick to not arrive very soon. But we're also approaching a very uh, a secondary key ultimate here for the G2 lineup. This Tom Kench ultimate can really surprise people, especially if you pair it with uh, an aggressive jungle like uh, Ys. Yeah, Tom Kench and Shen, the number of things that can appear from nowhere and rise uh, yeah. is close to its peak, actually, as far as team compositions are concerned. But if they want to make those plays, they still have to get the push in the lane, which they are doing a really good job of for the first eight minutes. The worry was that Team WE was going to push in all the lanes and Condi was going to be invading Trick's jungle constantly. That hasn't happened, so you have to consider this an early game win for G2. Especially if you consider that the, the, the catalyst to a lot of these losses was Trick falling behind in the jungle. We had that, uh, the new new red invade where it was like 2 HP off, Trick just trying to catch up for losses and really making poor percentage plays. 
Right now, he's in a good spot here, looking for a 2v2. 2v2, here comes the jungler turning around in this one as well. Here comes Briggs, gets a Shen to his dame though. Nice dodge, the cocoon kicks him over the wall, lands the Q as well. Right back out goes Trick, who is flashless. One more hit, I'll do it. Kill comes through to Shie. Now they're on to Perks. Perks gonna stay alive in this one, though. Great trade, and that was through a Shen that did get canceled by 957's ulti, but either way, nice kill on the Trick. Yeah, poor communication to heat of the moment. Perks and Trick were clearly expecting uh, expect to land, but he didn't show up, and then suddenly he turned around. Really good read from WE, realizing the Shen was canceled, and then turning on the aggressive. Yeah, and a big outplay by Condi towards the end of that fight, because it's a 2v2 skirmish with fairly equal levels. The one disadvantage that Trick had is he'd gone mobility boots rush and really didn't have much combat effectiveness, whereas you had the Warhammer on the side of Condi, so he's going to be doing more damage, especially when he's able to land his kill shots. Yeah, here's Perks using his ultimate to his advantage, matching the teleport. We also need to track if uh, if we get a replay there, whether the, the synergy between Elise and Vice is actually up to the rise to get a good W placement. Yeah. Because if the guy's behind a minion, like, Trick is not Angelina Jolie. He can't get that cocoon <laughs> around. Let's see what happens here. So he'll trade on GA, but GA is actually hiding behind the castle gate. Yeah, Trick there for the counter gank. Chanel comes in, so you expect this to trigger. Yeah, that flash right there by Condi is what turned it. And you also notice 957, pretty easy Grog Assault. I mean, expect would have had to go much further back if he wanted to avoid that. Of course, when Shen doesn't arrive, the ultimate wasn't on Trick, he has no extra shielding. Team WE smartly focus him. Good kill picked up, so equalizes the gold here in this one. And Condi had already been farming a bit more than Trick, so individual gold-wise, it's pretty much the same amount of money on both of these two junglers. G2 small gold lead from farm right now. We'll see what else can pay off there. Bot lane actually still plus seven. Yeah, the gank obviously helps with that one, but still it's Ven and Mithy who have been pretty frequently the reason they've been winning games are off to a good start. It's uh, about five minutes until the really cool part of this game starts, where WE will initiate 1v1 protocol, put the both teleports on the side lanes, and then G2 have the ability to really move rapidly in between lanes with that Rise, Shen, and Tom Kench. Yeah, there's been a couple of trends we've noticed at this tournament. One of them was the shielding supports. Those are almost getting banned out now. So from there, we've been seeing so much more split map play. These teams are playing the side lanes more than we've seen in quite a while. So whoever can get an advantage on those side lanes, and it can be from either the mid lane getting ahead or the top lane getting ahead, holds a huge edge. So you can make those plays. Condi gonna get face checked by Expected to talk into, of course, the Ward was there, kicks him right back out. Here comes Smithy bringing in Trick that jumps right back onto Condi. Doesn't go for any CC just yet, gonna run right back out. Looks like 957 threatening enough now. Perks showing up, but that is a haphazard dive. They already stopped fighting. Why even go for the ulti perks? And here we see the theory in action, but an execution error. But you can just imagine what this comp could have achieved. But what a great reaction from WE. I'm sure they smelled it. The second expect blind taunts 1v2, I think they knew what was coming. Yeah, I mean, they tried to throw the kitchen sink at him with only Sven staying in the bottom lane. You can have the right call, like rushing the Nexus as TSM is doing the other Drake, uh -huh. but you have to hit the right things at the end of it. And G2, I think, could have made soon. the right theory, but like didn't the make Nexus. it happen. Yeah, well. What about in 2014 when yes. you had the right call? Is that too soon? That's yeah. fine, we can talk about that one. Okay. Statue of Limitations for, <laughs> for Nexus Rushes. Great. Oh, here we are at a tied game. This one, again, very important. This is the last time these teams will play each other during the group stage, and it's the two teams tied for second, the 3-3 three and three record. I mean, you've got a 6-0 SK Telecom T1. It's pretty good when you're expecting to lose twice to that Korean squad. No major offensive moves have been coming through for Team WE just yet. And the thing is, they are on their key ultimates. We've got the Nethergrass from Ben. You've got the Enchanted Crystal Arrow from Mystic. These are the champions that you would expect to see starting out the fight. Now, against the Tom Kench, that's not going to happen really for you. But if they can get out of the lane and find someone else to kill, that can. Yeah, so it, it's actually both teams keeping each other at a status quo. A move you can often make with Varus and Tom Kench is basing and switching sides of the map. But obviously, you don't want to do that against WE because creating an open map for these split pushes is not really in G2's favor. So they're staying bot lane. A little bit of a pause right now so we can delve even deeper into that top lane. Yeah, so specifically as we get to figure out what this pause was, uh, whenever you were against a LeBlanc, yeah. the LeBlanc's motives is the side lanes. You're trying to push up the mid lane as quickly as possible, almost like any roamer, but the, the side lane threat LeBlanc has is so much higher. And the reason you match it with Rise is by the late game, LeBlanc typically can't kill the Rise, but Rise doesn't have the same split push, push threat as LeBlanc. So yep. really the, the goal for G2 and all this is to have perks and the side lane survive until he's at that point where LeBlanc doesn't kill him because then he can enter the fight faster than LeBlanc. Same for the carries. Looking at the Malzahar, everybody always talks about how he forces QSS buys. 
and it makes an inefficient mid-game spike. But if you go into the late game, suddenly the support is rendered useless. He only brings a two-second silence in teamfights, and that is pretty much it. Because everybody will have an answer to his key ability. Whereas the Tom Kench, Devour, scales up even better into the late game, because the, the relative value, in my opinion, goes up. Yeah, it is nice as well. You think about some of the efficiencies and forcing QSS buys, whatnot. It's almost only Perks who's actually required to do that. Zven, more often than not, is going to be near Mythy. Zven's going to be able to build more damage base. I mean, he's the highest damage per minute player at this tournament right now. Zven is doing so much work right now overall as a player, and him getting to build efficiently means he gets to do that even more. It means he gets to be uh, even more efficient, as it, as it were, and that's always a good thing to have. You can see if... I can see the scoreboard right here, but we're seeing that Perks has Merc Treads and has bought yet another No Magic Mantle, which might be QSS, first major item, basically sitting on just tier and Catalyst and waiting until that comes through. A lot of options available to him, but certainly, yeah, everyone's going to be respecting Ben and respecting Mystic and then hoping they can win the team fights afterwards. Yeah, and they always have uh, expect on that Shen as well. Going back to a, a familiar style, I feel like this is almost a G2 of a year ago where they would just slap expect on tanks, hope for him to survive and contribute to the team. Domestically, he actually improved, and I've, I found his, his carry play to be really fun to watch, even going into matchups like a Wunder or an Odawanda and still pull his weight, but it seems at the tournament, they try to protect him a few times in picks and bans, didn't work out, and now he's back on tanks. Yeah, and touching back on the game a little bit, which we're paused 12 and a half minutes into, it's exceedingly close. Gold yeah. is only 100 different, uh, but with that being said, I still feel like G2 holds a slight edge in this moment, only because the early game should have been in such heavy favor for Team WE, and because G2 has played very strong late games against LeBlanc before. So, obviously when we paused, um, the nice thing about casting in other venues where your voice isn't going out to everyone is you don't have to worry about giving away any type of strategy. It cannot the, possibly The hear Ocean us. Drake going over to Miss to uh, Condi, Condi, which is most likely going to happen after the pause, helps WE a little bit, but it's still just a stalling game for G2. Yep. There's, there's the one problem that we sometimes look at, though, is Drake and his scaling. At least compared to Lee Sin, uh, falls off a little bit, especially if you go for the Moby and then like the AP route on Elise. It's basically a shotgun approach. Like, either you hit and kill, or you're essentially useless in these fights. I want to chime in quickly on the reason for the pause. League officials are investigating a network issue. Now, to my understanding, they are playing on a LAN client here, but I uh, don't have any further information than that, but that's what I've been told. So uh, they are investigating that to make sure everything's going okay. Otherwise, uh, we may ship off to the analyst desk in a few minutes when they're ready for us, but otherwise we're going to talk about this. It seems like this pause will take a couple more minutes still to resolve. If you want to go grab a drink of water, it's probably the best time for you at home. Oh, I see you, freak. Yeah, all right, uh, that's fine. Uh, I'll cast better without you guys around regardless. You said it, you're, I was, you know, you're my favorites. It's because you let me talk more. Uh, that's why I can just hear myself talk more often. But, yeah, hopefully we do get the resolve soon enough. You know, we had gone three days without a hitch, but unfortunately on day four, something else happened. And uh, we still wait to see what uh, can be resolved. Yeah. I mean, you say without a hitch. Mithy did pause when he thought his side That's true. Land. I... I I had to bring that yeah, up. Yeah, I that mean, a, we keep we keep bringing out points We were going to mention about that. I still think it's fine for a player to pause whenever they think they something think could go wrong. wrong. Because if it actually was, you would regret it. And the pause that Mithy did was about yeah. a minute long. So I, I think it's totally fine, even though people are flaming him for thinking that he should have landed. It's, it's better to see a pro player once in a while pause a game and then be told that there was no reason to pause than there actually being an instance where he could have paused and then after the game feels really bad about it. You know, that is still the best outcome. In yeah. that particular instance, I also think it was because it wasn't an enraged W on the Renekton, and you're so used, whenever yeah. your Renekton plays, dashes in, that's a full Fury W, three you strikes. Expect the one and a half seconds then. Uh -huh. And, and then also, even though it wasn't an issue, and I think he should have paused, it's still hilarious when a player thinks it should have landed, because then you can still casually flame him in a fun way. Yeah, yeah, of course you can. All right, well, as we mentioned, as the league officials are investigating a network issue on the stage, we're going to send it over to our analyst to fill in some time for us. Thank you very much, Freak. Wow, they're investigating that networking issue on stage. We're going to get to talk about the games, or at least what we've seen of it so far. I love Jat there throwing a little mention about casual flame every <laughs> once in a while. But, um, but with this game, we had questions around Trick, how WE might target him going into champion select. Well, he lands on Elise, so a champion that has the ability to make plays in the early game, and we were looking for him to do just that. Yeah, and uh, you know, it got started, you had a great gank bottom lane, a lot of that was attributed to Mithy on that Tom Kench, and that's kind of like the big pick for me. Like, yeah, it's nice to see Trick at the Elise, but I felt like it was a big over oversight from Team WE to allow that Tom Kench to go through, you know, in second rotation, they picked the Malzahar, when you can clearly see the makings of a pick composition 
rotation coming out. You know, the Varus, the Elise, and first rotation from G2. I mean, the champion pull stuff, I think, is rings really true, because Ivrin and Graves are both banned out. The last one banned out by G2 is the final ban. And then you come to the point where, well, Lee Sin is there. You've got to first pick it, but you remember, OK, G2 and Trick has tried it twice, and both times was underwhelming as the, let's say, broadcast-friendly version of what we saw on his lease, and it was poor by international standards, so you don't need to first pick. You can go for the Ash, that's the other big high-priority uh, high pick, with both shielding supports gone, hyper carries are less viable, so most of the time you can go for the Ash very safely, but I think Tom Kenj and Lee Sin are kind of the outliers here, where they get Lee Sin in the second round, which in, against any other team you would expect Lee Sin to be taken priority, and then because Ben is such a proponent of the Malzahar, he looks past the Tom Kench that I think both teams should have been fighting for, and in the end, it feels like G2 was kind of gifted. This is definitely the highlight pick of this pick in bands. Uh, Mithy plays a bunch of Tom yep. Kench, actually most played, uh, as well as the Ash already being picked, and it's super good pick into both Malzahar and Lisa, so there's no hesitation with this pick. It's good. Everything that you're seeing made it really good. I think that was the, you know, the big win for that uh, draft phase, but getting into the game. Because uh, we talk about execution, right? Yeah. Uh, and the play down bottom uh, for G2 was around this Tom Kench pick and made because of that specific pick. That's why we're focusing on it so much. Uh, the aftermath, though, you know, Trick does use his flash for this gank, and it's very risky to then go for mid 2v2s because when you go for a mid 2v2 uh, early on in the game, almost always you go for the jungler and you target the jungler. Here's how it all started, though, where mid the, the Tom Kench pick we're talking about. And take a note of where that Devour is. I cannot believe that he actually gets the cooldown long enough to gobble up Elise and carry her to safety. But that stun landing, that was so unfortunate. Even though Condi tries to body block the cocoon. And then here's the thing. We think that Trick's going to go down here. Mithy to the rescue. Yeah, I mean, Trick was already pulling back because he knew he'd get in range for the Q and then get out. But the Tom Kench having it up. You can see Mithy on your screen just bouncing around. He knows that the Devour was the difference there because because he took that turret shot, a single more auto, and it would have been one for one. Happy to get that kill, but to your point, Kobe, expending the flash there in order to get it, therefore roll into that mid lane 2v2, and the kill gets traded back. So currently evened up one to one in terms of kill score. Slight gold advantage from CS to G2. But now I want to go all the way back to the beginning because I made you guys throw in your predictions. And Kobe, you were like, I really want to do predictions after Champions. Oh, he gets select. what he wanted. So now we have that well, opportunity. This is, this is actually <laughs> this even is more. Fault. This is actually even more cheating because You've uh, seen we've a couple seen, minutes of we've play seen as well. The opening of the game as well. But 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 since we've got the time, we may as well. Would you guys change your predictions based on what you've seen so far in terms of the team comps that have been put together and the play as it's developed so far in this game? I think I'll. I'll bite the bullet. <laughs> <laughs> I can see everyone's like, uh. Um, so looking across from Team WE's draft, if you're unfamiliar with the LPL, uh, these are all comfort picks across the board. Condi on his Lee Sin, CA on the LeBlanc, uh, Mystic on Ash, there's a reason why it was a priority pick, and then Bing gets his Malzar. Do I necessarily like the composition and how it fits into, you know, the, the Tom Kins disruption? No, but there's no excuse for Team WE not to be able to execute on this because they play this, you know, hundreds of times throughout the LPL. So I'm a bit weighted towards them there, even though I like G2's draft better late game. And it's funny that you think you're falling on your sword because I'm actually in the opposite camp where I actually predicted WE and then my educated opinion based on what the information we have now, you look at the draft that Tom Kench does feel like a trump card. So Bunch that, of flip-floppers oh, over <laughs> here. I'm <laughs> staying with my bet. <laughs> let me get there. Let me get there now. I like the Tom Kench, obviously. I think both teams wanted Tom Kench. Yeah. Got it in this spot. The Malzahar priority is another one where I kind of scratch my head, but watching LPL bots, you know, that happens from time <laughs> to time. I just, um, what? Mind blown, I understand. But then the fact that we've also played quite a bit of game and it feels like a lot of WE's advantages are weighted to the early game. The early game's not over. We're not in the transition to mid game yet. With that extra information of seeing no big lead, in fact, a goal disadvantage to a comp that I really think does outscale pretty severely on the side of G2. How many games have we seen LeBlanc try to power through shields and uh, redemptions and Shen ultimates and Arise who builds tanky anyway? It feels like there will be a natural tipping point around 30, 35 minutes. So I'd actually go the reverse and favor G2 as an educated opinion, but you never really know, right? There still could be a flare point. We're still early in the game. You got thoughts, Kobe, or can I move on to a quick? Like I said before, I am staying with my bet. I am actually going to highlight a different area that I'm a little bit concerned about, and it is the Moby boots on Elise here for Trick. Um, because of that kill in the mid lane, you lose quite a, quite a decent amount of momentum. 
Um, so that would be the one area. Like, I do have faith in Condi. I've actually become a pretty big Condi fan over there, uh, the last couple uh, of months here. Um, and I think that would be the um, one main area. All right, just as a note for you viewers, we have people going through the logs right now trying to work through this issue. So still a few minutes away from getting back towards gameplay, but just keeping you updated on what the issues are. So now I want to talk about your point here in terms of late game scaling and that LeBlanc in particular. You know, we've seen LeBlancs with multiple different build paths here so far, but yet to see anyone stick to that side lane and really spread the map out as opposed to grouping in the late game and using it as a team fighter. I'm almost 100% that CA will try to group up as a team fighter, and the reason being is even if he decides to go for the gunblade, which most I believe he started to build it, it's usually what he does in the LPL. If you look at G2's composition, they have so much mobility to counteract someone trying to play in a side lane looking for a split push. The Tom Kench, the Rise, and the Shen can all beat him there. All right, well, as you speak, I get the word that we're going to send it back to the casters because the teams are readying up to get back into the game. Guys, take it away. Thank you very much, Dash. Yep, 12 minute long pause. Players are ready. I saw both Condi and Perks type are in chat, which is the globally accepted I'm ready to play League of Legends emote. That's a good character. sign. It is a good sign, yeah. yeah. Apparently, uh, no cause for alarm really has been found. Is I'm, I'm heavily shortening what I've been told in my headset, but we are ready to go back into the game. And G2 Esports from the European LCS and Team WE from the Chinese LPL are ready to get back into their game. And here we go, Ocean Drake have been going down. Condi gets it, no problem. Yeah, what better way to resume that instant Drake here, bonus for WE. G2 were getting ahead uh, by scaling, but we're still waiting for a key moment is where their first item spice come out for WE and they move into the 1v1. So by no means is G2 safe yet. Exactly, waiting for Gunblade out of the mid lane LeBlanc, waiting for Blade of the Ruin King out of the bot laners. And we're also waiting for when the globals come into play because we're still in the laning phase. That's not likely to decide this game. It's going to be about how they play the side lanes in this matchup and how much they can spread out the map and make the proper collapses. Yeah, and the game has been uh, snowballing for W. Whenever Ben and Condi could successfully group up and play with some vision here, following this dragon take, they moved in deep vision, got a blue buff steal here, so slowly creeping on to G2's turf. So didn't creep on any farther right now. Gold League, he's going back and forth. 200 right now in the favor of Team WE. And then it goes back to nothing, so never mind. Farms and waves going back and forth. Plus Ooh. 20 for the top set of expect. Definitely a solid one here. Been looking for the big play alongside Trick over to flank in his bottom lane. Looking for Ben. They poke off the passive. Great flash to get away. And the CC will not land. Here comes the re-engage. Arrow's gonna land on the mid. The after burns the flash. Here comes the pressure. They have the burst damage. Tries to get the shields on to live a little bit longer, but he's not gonna survive it through. Nice kill picked up for WE. The ulties are layered, no problem. Yeah, cautious engage here. Follow-up coming. That's a fake clone. Here's the real one. Cocoon used on the clone. Here comes the chase. One kill coming through. Make that another one. Three for zero with a bot lane dive. Team WE far ahead now. We talked about collapses. That was Team WE making a huge one. We saw Mithy try and get aggressive with Trick. They only sent three, but Team WE was able to bring the entire squad down there. Did not like the placement of Mithy's Abyssal Voyage, but Team WE turned that around beautifully. Yeah, definitely did not. Let's Try and get in the minds here, like maybe why they don't want to get lane ganked potentially, but still they're way out of range. Telegraphing it's super hard for yeah. for Ben to flash your jab, and then the reaction from Expect is way too late. Exactly. Ben still had his passive shield up, so I also have to point out that Mithy was focused properly. Otherwise, yeah. he would have just devoured someone. So the guy that they could nether grasp, they did. But then the continuation of the gank as well, burning the cocoon on the clone, only emboldening WE even more so when Condi landing the spells on Lee Sin. Everything worked out at the end there for Team WE. And one, mother, uh, one other constraint here, a uh, critique here of Mithy, is he flashed in a line. He saw the arrow flash and it still hit him. You're not allowed to flash into the skill shots that get you killed. Mistake from Mithy that even got these kills happening in the first place. If he lives, he saves the rest of the targets. That dive probably doesn't happen at all. Yeah, that placement, it really makes you wonder, right? Like Because they, they're being proactive with the play. They don't have the Shen with them from the get-go, so they're kind of half committing both location and in terms of intensity of the gank. And somehow WE, they get to react much faster here uh, on a reactive play. And because of that, all the golden flux they just got, Gunblade completed on the Blanc, Blade of the yeah. Rune King, and QSS completed on to Mystic. They have the ability now to play forward and set up more of those plays. Let's see what W can now do with this one. They've had hit and miss early in this one, though, hitting pretty nicely now at the 15, 16 minute mark here. Mystic has been swapped into the mid lane alongside Sven on the other side. Ulti's not going to land. Nice dodge there by Mystic. Toss going to go in, but a perfect timing on the Quicksilver. Sash Mystic is away with it. Nice job to stop that aggression. Really good movement here by Mystic. 
Sven, again, not finding the mark here and crucial engages. We had the Ash Arrows kind of go wander off right now. That Varus Ultimate doesn't connect for the second time in a row. Need to see if this gets to uh, G2's mental game. Yeah, pretty good amount of harass there just from a few spells from Shea as well. You can see blue buff, Gunblade of the Blanc at this point of the game. Uh, very difficult to deal with. Perks is going to try and match because he's built so much magic resist, but it's still going to be a tall task. Puts the clone in the brush to see if the Shen was recalling. In fact, the recall complete, so we get out of that one. But yeah, here comes Rise to match in the lineup. Ben and Mystic back into the mid lane. Perks playing very defensively in this one. Does not have Flash, does not want to get attacked by another grasp. They know Ben's ulti is down, but that cooldown is likely to be shorter on the Flash. Now W is looking for spillover. They're looking to push this LeBlanc lane, move into the enemy jungle, maybe surprise somebody mid, maybe surprise somebody who's warding over walls. Same for the Gragas in the top lane. Q Max means just AoE push, disappear, find the pick somewhere. W is in their ideal formation, 1-3-1. One, one. Exactly, and you have to wonder how G2 is going to try and fight back from this because the multiple times, too, they've tried to use Abyssal Voyage, it's gone wrong for them. They either blow everything to get nothing or they just kind of walk into a counter gank. Another Ash Arrow finds true. Gonna find the stun, gonna find the root as well. Grey Hell still getting burned down. Do they have the damage to kill off Minty? Not just quite. Under 100 left on the support. He's gonna survive though. Perks is in the lane with his ghost popped and does not find anything to do with it. So a summoner spell down for basically nothing. He ulted in and found no targets. Really close there for Mithy going down. His flash was still on cooldown. Uses great health very well right there. Procked it at the right time. But you can see the threat that W is applying. They can get him this one. The threat is still there. Mid lane going to be falling pretty rapidly. But I got the first turn of the bot lane. Now the chase under is cutting it. Kickback knocks up Sven. Doesn't go for that dive just yet. Now Expect is here. Does find one kill. Ben goes down. 957 is the target. One stack from Tom Kent is on. Here's two. One more attack. We give him Devour, but he's not going to get that one here. It's now Expect. We're going to help. Nice knockback finds him. And Mithy never able to save. Instead, he dies. Two picked up there for one traded back. Well played, WE again. Yeah, beautiful turn by 957 there, but you also have to talk about the poor communication at the tail end of that team fight for G2. Their front line was forward, which normally feels like a good thing, except their entire backline damage threat was at about 200 health, so they couldn't even get close. That just allowed Team WE to free hit, wait for the turn, land the Grogus ultimate, and get the kills. Nice fight by Trick, but it's a poor consolation prize. It's a participation ribbon at best right now with the fact that WE has taken over everything for the last several minutes of this game. 4,000 gold lead, two turns to zero as well. And you're looking at the root on the Trick. Yeah, and they just took a massive leap forward in this race for second place here. Both teams tied at three and three, looking for that fourth victory here. WE, their, their early game wasn't the best with this composition, but they just turned it on on this first item spike. Yeah, and it was about grouping in the mid lane, but note that they grouped before G2 did. Perks keeps the Shen ult, Mithy comes in, so that's a lot of the chase G2 had already down. Expect also expense his flash taunt needlessly. Yeah, here they should pull the fight. I'm pretty sure Mithy still has Devour. He could just walk out with Expect here, but he's looking to play so defensive that gives a, honestly, a fantastic ultimate ult for 957. Two man cast right there, nothing they could do. But really poor coordination from G2, as you're mentioning. Yeah, great play from WE, but Sven is literally hitting minions under the turret while his front line is running for it. He had helped the fight, and he didn't tell them, or he didn't get the message, or something went wrong, where he's hitting minions when his tanks are trying to engage, and that just can't happen. Jat, you had mentioned before, low health bar on perks as well, of course. And it's a mistake from G2, and capitalization by WE. Yeah, it could also be mistaken. Sven's flash may have been down during that fight. Uh, whenever Gragas enters the fight like that with Body Slam Flash available, as well as Cask, you have to be extremely respectful as someone likes Sven. So I can see why he would stay back in that fight. Gonna dodge some of the CC. Trick is gonna be able to get away with this one. Explosive cast, Jukes to the side. Perks is okay, so is Trick. Pretty well played defense by G2, but this wrap up gonna be taken away, which is still advantage to Team WE. Spike guarantees another re-engage. Sven not long for the world. One more hit, I'll do it. Taken down by 957. Heavy lifting done by Shea, of course. Trick forced to run, it's a kill, plus the red buff steal. WE just continuing to win everything. Perks pops X Drinker. Looking for Condi, won't get much more. Nice stun, stops 957. Yeah, G2 looking to reclaim something on the bot side of the map. Perks has had really good movement in his fights, but his allies are getting picked off. Turns out even if you have flash available, Jet, you can still fall victim to body slam flash and end up dying. Yeah, that fight was all about Shea getting yep. the majority of the damage on to Sven. So now he's flashless and things are kind of going from bad to worse. Expect doesn't even stay to push the bottom lane. I thought that was the whole point of delaying the recall. So uh, not the best after fight coordination, but watch Shea on to Sven. Mithy's not even close, of course. Normally you'd want him there as we can save Sven. 
and prevent some of the damage coming through. Not even a possibility for him there. He's on the wrong side of the fight with that one. Can't objectively blame Mithy, but it's still the situation they were in. Yeah, and this game's getting out of hand because Team WE is making the right call in almost all cases here. Yes. G2 isn't playing as good defense as maybe they could be, but Team WE is just relentlessly assaulting them. Absolutely agree. All the time, they are into the jungle looking for fights, looking for those pickoffs, and Xie has done so well on that LeBlanc. Yeah, and this offensive play style with double split, split push also has really low cost of failure because the, the plays are made so deep in G2's jungle that even when they can outplay or neutralize, they can't get any objectives on the back of those plays, right? While well, WE is actually stealing away jungle farm from Drick, and that actually makes him fall further and further behind on this very... Um, Snowball-y pick in the Elise. Absolutely the case, and even though he did get that first gank or counter gank or whatever you want to call it off, hasn't found much more so far in this game, and Condi is true to the pedigree we've seen so far at this tournament. Condi is having the better game from the jungle roll. Trix managed to smite his own blue buff back. That's been about, a, been about it so far this game. He's licking their wounds, hoping they can scale up, but with how much threat is on Sven? Even with a hurricane completed in about a thousand gold, it's going to be so far to go for G2 to catch up. Yeah, now we're already started to think about the Baron Asher calls, but if you look at G2's combo, they are extremely good at defending their own jungle. They have multiple uh, movements possible to get into the pit. Abyssal Voyage, you know, maybe with the Tom Kench or the Rise Ultimate is available too for them. So it's going to be very hard for WE to get conclusive control over this top left quadrant. So they need to keep the map open. Yeah, and they need to continue to make the plays. We talk about the late game scaling of the Malzahar against a QSS Tom Kench. If they ever end up in that situation where they group and they're not able to spread out the map, it makes the Malzahar mostly irrelevant. And likewise, if you get enough inherent magic resist and Sven doesn't get hit by Shia skill shots, LeBlanc can be a non-factor. So you can have a lot of different ways of outscaling if you're G2 right here, as long as they can stop the bleeding. It just gets harder and harder the more successful plays Team WE make. And that's the thing. Team WE has made these successful plays. They are ahead. They've done such a good job in this game. 6,000 gold in 23 minutes is certainly a great mark to be in right now. And let's watch as they keep it going. They've got decent ward coverage in this top jungle. They've got about six around the Baron pit right now. 957 seems to have pretty good enough control over Expect in the lane. He's just kind of playing the part. It's about the other four and what they can do with this one. Again, that ward control pretty nice. You can see complete darkness in that upper river. G2 have to face check Fog yeah. of War brush after Fog of War brush. They're we can be waiting in all of them. They're debating. Are they three man that No, they are, but it's strict dying. They're going to look for a lot of damage into this one. Of course, the chain still follows. Stun and Amithi pops the quick silver sash, but that is health bars and cooldowns burned. And that's why it's really important to use the buddy system when you're checking the jungle like that with the Tom Kench. Uh, pretty much perfect use of the Devourer and the QSS, but that still pushes them back. QSS is now down, they're low on health. Team WE make the turn. That's the play they have to make. They know it's so hard to actually get the kills in the jungle. So they're gonna go for the Baron play itself. Trick was Chunk, has to come back into this one. But if it goes on, look for Abyssal Voids and Shadow to drop Trick potentially into the pit. He can repel as well. This Penny's is a 50-50. 3,000 health, perks off on the side, here comes Shen, there's the no, and it's gonna be a lot of damage, the taunt to run away, they're gonna get some off Baron. Trick gonna be chunked very low, nice push in on Inspect, but he's the tank, he's gonna stay alive. G2 able to stop the Baron attempt. To G2's credit, they have been very good at defending Baron here at MSI, so another close hold, but WE is gonna continue to go. The defense might be cut right now, it's gonna be Shea getting the opening setup. Kill comes through to 957, but make no mistake, the hard work was done by the mid laner. Condi actually ends his Q on just the underside of the wall, so he gets pushed back. I know it looked funny, but that is gonna work that way based on when he hit the button. But it looks like it's another attempt for Baron, this time with the dead mid laner and double Ostrick to keep their health bars high. Yeah, they're going back. Drake is lurking around the top side. He knows he can wait a little bit here. So it's reaction to bait, to poke, to starting Nasher, and then another turn here. It can't think. Do the unthinkable here with the steal. TP's coming in for expect. Looking for the play. It's a 4v5. Trick over the wall, repels way oh, early and dies for free. He didn't know how low it was. It's going to be a clean take. It's G2, forced to run away. WE with the great play secures the Baron with no sweat at all. I love the relentlessness, and I love how they utilize the double ocean Drake. That was so critical there in the extended fight, never having to recall and still being at full health. But specifically, G2 just had no other ways of getting vision inside the pit. They kept the control ward down so that the blue ward was able to just get disabled. And then Trick just had to try to find his win because they, they were out of control with their out of yes. everything else for vision. WE has been forcing G2 to gamble. When initially it was Ax pushing up the lane solo and mid, and they could technically be doing three-man Asher. G2 gambled on the face check, they got punished and poked out, then they had to go around. W did not want to go for 50-50, so they got key ultimates turned again. And meanwhile, 
the ocean drakes just kept on ticking and ticking and ticking. And then they went in. And I love that you can play with the, the speed at which you take a Baron Asher. A lot of teams will do a 50-50 and actually hold it on 3,000. Wait for somebody to come in, kill that guy, and then turn. So this is actually very calmly played by W. Definitely agree. Smart stuff out of the squad. And the 8,000 gold is what's there to show how good they've been in this game. Turning around a single bot lane counter gank, and otherwise it's all been roses. The Chinese squad right here looking to improve to 4-2, and two, looking to make it a 2-0 head-to-head against G2, which would tie-break any head, uh, you know, one, two-team tiebreaker, obviously, yep. which sets WE in pole position to get that second place by. I realize the irony of pole for second place, but trust me, it's going to work in this metaphor here. 9,000 gold looking for the push now into the bottom lane. Inhibitor turret under fire shortly. G2 against the ropes. Yeah, Team WE has done such a great job of snowballing this one up until this point. They have the sustain as well, so they can keep this as a relentless push. Mystic goes down to half health. He's got good life steal as well as Ocean Drake, so he'll be full health in no time. Yeah, this, that, full health. And this is a team as well that stepped into the tournament with Condi and Mystic being their big, big names uh, alongside Shiye. But I feel like 957 has really done a great job in their wins here. Key factor. Now Zvet's flying in. Now they're going to find Mindy, who's able to save a bit of time for this wow. one. The kickback gets him nicely played by Condi. Going to get away with it as well. He's going to make it all happen. Double kill so far for Shie. Looking for a bit more as Expect Force to run away. Stunned up. Going to die despite the dodge zone. They got plenty of damage also wise. And it's going to be bot lane inhibitor dying. Yeah, Ben's actually adding a lot of value. Even though every offensive move ult wise is getting cancelled, he's giving two second silences in these team fights because his team is playing so far forward, making it very easy to land them. And that breaks with the normal flow for G2 as well. And what a dive that was just overall for Team WE, pushing just as far as they can without losing a single member. This is probably going to be the game. It's going to be at 28 minutes in. The first Nexus to has fallen. Purge hoping to do something to buy time. It's just not going to happen, though. It's just Mithy and the mid laner tricks around here somewhere as well. And they're going to try oh, as hard stand. as they can to kill something off. But the last stand, well, they're not going to stand for too much longer. The respawns are back. She is there to do a bit more damage. Trick running him out of the base. and. Okay, G2 have bought a few more seconds, but the cost them the life of their jungler. Well, they're deciding to run out of the base and recall because they have such a gargantuan advantage, but a defenseless nexus the yep. next time W wants to walk in. It's never a good sight when the enemy team is casually strolling out of your base past two turrets, and then turning back to kill you because they have two there oceans. We go. They weren't even recalling. They're looking for the fight right again. Ben stays alive. Will drop down to Sven. That's something picked up, but look at the damage of it back onto him. Killed off by Mystic, who's now got double kill for himself. And even Shie survived just barely. His encounter with the two solo of G2, and now once again they continue the siege in the mid lane. I don't think I've ever seen a game with this much value from Ocean Drake. Yeah, this it happens occasionally, right? You realize when it is the perfect Drake for you right now. Whenever they can't quite kill you, it just means they never have to recall it, especially in a game that can be dictated by tempo and ultimate cooldowns like Stan United. Team yep. WE is getting so much value out of it. Especially against old base teams you mentioned. So we can watch that bot lane fight again as we set it up. Yeah, this was just so well done by Team W. We noticed right after the QSS, they still land the Ash Arrow and get the kickback on the mid. Yeah, and it's, it's so easy for them to go. GA, his, his, like his movement in and out of these fights is so crucial. He goes in the background, kills, snaps back to reality right there, and Ben, he's just walking around silencing people. You know, it makes it, it almost looks too easy for WE. Yeah, the turret was also on 957 for the majority of that dive after Condi had gone in for the first one, so they even bounced that properly. Just very well done. There's not much left to do now, G2. This, is, this would be a much stronger comeback than the Flash Wolves or the nearly TSM one. This is, even though G2 have come back from really Ruling this one is practically out of reach. 15 to 3 and kills. W looking to close it out soon. This is becoming a pattern here for G2. They attack the setup, but they don't want to get split pushed into their base. Whenever somebody has a Baron or an aggressive push here, they're looking to attack them in the moment they're setting up formation. They're trying to find it. 957 though in the front line. Arrow's going to land on a trick. Gets chomped up by Minty. Stays alive. There's the flash ulti on the burst. He says, now he's going to be alive for a little bit longer, but there's the first kill. Minty is gone. Nice setup there. The two double knockback as Trick has fallen. Perk's going to be off the map as well. Two left alive. And Sven is now dropping. Only expect left alive. And I expect this game is going to be over. Debbie, we got to close it out. Got to improve to four and three. And they're going to dominate the head to head 2 0 against G2 Esports. WE running well in the back half of this group stage. Yeah, three people on Team WE deathless in this game. They played it very well and make a strong statement to try and be the number two in this tournament. Well played, Team WE amidst the cheers of the Brazilian crowd here in Rio de Janeiro. What might be the number two team at this tournament have been victorious. G2 Esports still have some wounds to lick. 
they're also still in third. Three and four is the highest other teams can hope to get at the end of the first set of games today. So still in a position to make the top four. Yeah, and Shio right there. King is dead, long live the king. Lane Kingdom goes over to the LPL of this game. Fantastic performance, pressure early with the LeBlanc. Move to the different lanes, side lanes, calls some flanks. When you group mid for the siege, that's kind of the tipping point of the game. Yeah, and there are a lot of pundits online saying, why are all these teams banning the Blanc? It's 0-4, it hasn't win. Just take a look at this game and the way that the map just collapsed after Team WE got a little bit of lead and the way he was able to dictate the pace along with the rest of the team. Very good play by Shea and WE. Absolutely agree. Of course, both these teams will play one more game today as well. And then tomorrow is the last day of the group stage. Shea, Ben, the rest of Team WE almost secured in that top four. It would take some kind of minor miracle to miss the knockout stage at this point, which would once again give the LPL a pool one seed into the World Championship at the end of the year. Keep in mind that is what's at stake here. The top four teams guarantee pool one for their region. There's four spots up for grabs, obviously. SKT have already gained that. No shocker there by any means for South Korea. But still, that is what's here at stakes for the there's three of the next five that are going to get that here, and, and whether it's going to be the GPL, North America, or more likely the LMS and, and China and, and uh, Europe, we're going to see, how which, of course, which teams can yeah. do that. Either way, it was a fun game in the cast. We're going to head over to our analysts now to get their thoughts on that WE win. Thank you very much, Freak. Team WE moving to four and three, solidly in second place, owning the head-to-head -head Just over like I G2, predicted. but Papa Smithy... <laughs> What happened, my man? You flip-flopped to <laughs> the incorrect call. What do you have to say for yourself? Dash, I think you can tell what sort of a test taker I was on multiple choice tests because this game went exactly like I first predicted, although I got that chance to second guess. I looked at the early game, I looked at the draft, and I said, okay, pretty settled. The game will continue to roll on like it did for the first 11 minutes or so before we had our pause, and then G2 should take it. We get back in and Bam, things changed, things escalated super quickly. WE actually pulled the triggers on the things that I expected pre-match and made me look silly. Let's take a look at that, because Jad talks about the LeBlanc here opening up the map with those roams, and right off the bat, off of this pause, a big play in the bot lane for Team WE. But it starts off with G2. That's the thing you have to track here, is that G2 many times went to this really aggressive place. Smithy channeling clear love with flashing into an Ash Arrow. Gets caught. 957's barrels, I think we'll see consistently, were the difference between the two teams. And great roam from Xie as well. Hey. Yeah. Plus, the Shen ultimate goes on to Mithy there, who's getting knocked into four people. Plenty of DPS to kill him off before the uh, Stand United can complete. And, like, I 100% I agree with Jet. Like, Xie was amazing. You know, you look at his scoreline, look what he was able to do with that LeBlanc. But 957 really was the unsung hero. Yep. And when I initially picked G2 to win this game, it was under the condition that I felt that they had a strong enough draft or a read on WE that they would pinch his champion pool and not give him one of his signature picks like that Gragas. And it was time and time again, you know, every time G2 did overreach, it was punishing with a, a incredible place cast. It was sweeping them off of inhib tower. So yeah, Xie led the charge, but it was 957 that really broke open G2 for Team WE. Yeah, there was a big difference in front lines, actually. Uh, he was able to interrupt a number of Shen teleports, yep. Yep. Uh, and he was also able to have the threat on the back line. We saw a couple, we have another replay uh, dash from that 18 minutes uh, in the mid lane, where it's a really good example. Uh, this is where G2, they use, you know, their kind of anti pick stuff where they're coming in uh, with the front line, and then Shen goes for the flash, the top flash onto the dead target, and they keep going. Really good bait here from WE. They see that the back line of G2 are all so low health. They Boom. bait in the front line. These are, this is the situation where you need better communication between back and front line in that uh, chase. Yeah, you have numbers advantage, but you didn't have health advantage. But it's also flashes in, misses taunt, taunt is down. All their tools were down, and they kept coming up the lane, not respecting the cast. And the cast was a different. I think 957 made the game in those two plays that we chose to read. And here's the thing, you can go directly to G2's draft. They banned Kled, Rumble, in second rotation of bands. 957 doesn't play Rumble. There's no reason to throw that ban on him unless, you know, he's been practicing it in scrims or something that I don't know of. Like, the Gragas fits much better in there. Look at this gold graph. When there was a pause, things were looking pretty even. <laughs> so I'm sorry that I believed in what we saw in the first 11 minutes. 
but then WE took it to a different gear <laughs> I didn't see in the first 11 minutes, and then the game was over. I also love the point about the Ocean Drakes and the role that they played in this game in terms of allowing WE to stay on the map and continue to push the pace, right? As we've seen in some games, we can have that kind of lull or the stall out, but being able to set up around the, you know, the Baron and repeatedly go back to it, forcing G2 to contest and therefore hand over kills, you know, they, they, they close the game in quite clean fashion. It is something to say about Team WE. They're very good at recognizing what their win conditions are. Even domestically back home, they'll do this thing where, you know, they bounce a lot of waves. They wait until they have the item breakpoints. Like, okay, we're ready to go. And then they pull the trigger. They did exactly that there. They knew that they weren't going to be able to take it late game. So they rushed the Baron and they close it early. All right, first game's in the books. We'll see if G2 can bounce back later in the day. But coming up after the break, we have another chapter in what is becoming.